Hi, fourth grade, and welcome to Math with Mr. G. Um, today is going to be our very first lesson towards our, you know, very first couple weeks, probably about four or five weeks of our virtual lessons. Um, I'm very excited to lead you guys through this. I'm very excited to cover all this content with you guys in this kind of new and exciting way. Um, I'm going to be using this right here. This is called my Zite board. It's a virtual whiteboard. It's just whiteboard spelled with a Z instead of a WH. And you guys can use this at home. It's free. Um, and practice all of your math on that. In case you guys don't have paper or pencil, you can even save your boards. I find it to be a very useful resource, and this is going to be what I'm going to be displaying all of our work on from every part forward. Um, I'm excited to have everyone here. I'm excited to see all the work that we do. And uh, before we get started with solving anything, I would like to just go over kind of how this is going to be set up in our work here. Okay, so what I have here on the side is a what's like a virtual post-it note. And it has our standard, which is what organizes um, the things we're learning, and an objective underneath that. So our standard is for NBT A1. So you could look that up. And our objective is that we're going to recognize that a multi-digit whole number, a digit in one place represents 10 times what it represents in the place to its right. So this is what I have planned for us to learn today and the next couple days. There's going to be times where we spend maybe just one or two days on one of these standards and objectives. There's going to be times where we spend upwards of even a week on these, depending on how many parts to it and how long the objective is. So what I do is I set up some examples here that I'm going to go and walk you through. And then I'm going to go over, for those that follow all the way to the end, I'm going to go over one of our assessment questions. So that's going to be the Google form that's attached to this, that's going to be a big part of your grade. I'm going to go over one of them to give you an idea of what to expect on the assessment. Um, I'm also going to go over one of these as a reward for continuing this work. That way, at the very least, you're going to get one right. Now, there might also be work attached to this as well, maybe a Zern lesson or a you know virtual online lesson with your teacher. Um, but in terms of this, these videos are between somewhere between 8 and 15 minutes long, and that's going to cover quite a bit. I highly recommend that you pause these if you get stuck. I highly recommend you rewind and watch these. Um, as we get more and more complex throughout this, you're going to have to probably go back a couple weeks sometimes and watch it. Let's say you know we're going over multiplication and you forgot the individual steps for multiplication. You're going to go back and find that video. Um, and I highly, highly suggest doing that. That's why we do we have these videos so that they're rewatchable. Now, with all that said, why don't we get started with our first one today? So it says here, as you did during the lesson, this is our lesson, we're going to label and represent the product or quotient by drawing disks on the place value chart. So let's look what this is here, okay? What they mean by product or quotient, product is the answer to multiplication question and quotient being the answer to a division question. Now we're not doing big multiplication or big division yet in the first day of fourth grade math, don't worry. But this is going to be just kind of a simple version of it using this place value chart to go over this. Now I have a place value chart here. And I'm going to type in real quick our place value, so ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, just going to abbreviate with an H. There we go. And then, of course, our millions. So we're gonna looking at we're gonna be looking at how if you have place value disks how to bundle them group them move them over, and place value disks are just little circles that are on your place value to represent numbers. So for instance, we have two thousands, right? So I'm gonna go to my thousands column. I have now one, two little disks. That's what we have. We have two thousands, and I'm gonna multiply that times ten, and I'm gonna actually first do that on our little spot here. If I take 10 and I multiply it times two, I actually have 20. And now I have 20,000. So let's duplicate that and show that here on this. So let's take our place value and let's do it like so. So now I have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So here's the deal. I can't have twenty thousands. You're not actually supposed to have more than nine in a single place value spot. Okay. It gets moved over. And we're gonna look at how we do that right now. 
So let's say I have this group right here. This is a group of 10, so I can circle it together. And this is a group of 10, so I can circle it together. And I'm going to move these over. Now when I move them over, I'm doing what's called bundling. I'm taking all 10 of these, and it gets put down into just one. Okay, so 10 thousands is equal to 1 ten thousand. So I'm going to draw just one place value disk for that 10, and another for this. So I haven't changed how many there are. I've only changed how we label them and what place value they're in. So I no longer have 20 thousands. I, in fact, instead have two ten thousands. Or you could say I have 20 thousands. So when you multiply these numbers by 10, you're adding them like this, adding them into groups of 10, and then you bundle them. You put them all together into one bundle, and you move it over. Just like, you know, imagine sticks. You know, you bundle your sticks together to make them easier to move, things like that. So let's look at another example here. Same process. I have 10 times 3, 10 thousands, equals blank, 10 thousands equals blank. All right. Before I do anything, I'm actually going to label my chart. It's a really good thing. A really good habit, I'm sorry, to before you start solving anything or writing anything down, to label your chart. Staying organized is one of the most foundational parts of mathematics. Okay. So 10 times 3, 10 thousands is going to give me 10 times 3, 30 10 thousands. So let's first put our three ten thousands. Ten thousands place, one, two, three. And I have to have 30, so it's going to be three groups of 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Great. Now, like I said in the previous question, we can't have more than 9 in a single place value. When there's 10, you have to bundle it and move it over, right? So I have, I did not want to do a circle. I'll make mistakes like that. I want to have all of these tens bundled together. And you can't bundle more than a group of 10. I can't bundle all 30 of these into one group. Okay, you have to bundle each group of 10 and then move them over. I'm gonna draw an arrows like this. Okay, so three groups of 10 thousands is the same thing as three groups of 100 thousands, like so. Awesome. So what do I really have now? And again, I haven't changed the value. I'm only changing how it's written and the place value it's in. So instead of 30 ten thousands, I now have 300 thousands. So 300 thousands, or we could write it as 300 thousand. Cool. So we've looked at the product and how we can bundle and move over. Now we're going to do kind of the opposite. We're going to work in the opposite direction. We're going to unbundle. So division finding the quotient, the answer of division, is like the same as working in the opposite direction and unbundling. So I'm going to label my place value chart before we do much else. So ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. Great. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing here is the division. So 4 thousands divided by 10 is the same thing as moving it over. So before we fill in up here, why don't we actually look at the place value chart first to better understand how we're going to fill in this top part. Because now that we're moving in the opposite direction, it can get a little confusing. So let's put my 4 thousands in. 1, 2, 3, 4. And if I'm dividing... I'm now moving these over to the right. I'm not moving them up. I'm moving them down the place value chart, like so. 
and I'm unbundling these into groups of 10. And we're just doing this this part of the exercise and this part of it to understand that numbers can move both ways um, and that they're equivalent. You're not ever going to write this out as the way it is. Like you're not going to to write 40 hundreds, right, as an answer for anything. But it is to understand that numbers can move. So I'm going to have a bundle, four bundles of 10. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, three. come on, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. It's a little easier on pen and, pa pen and paper than it is this online whiteboard with those, but these are each a bundle. I have unbundled, I have gone from the left column to the right column for place value, but I haven't changed the value. Okay, four thousands is not equal to four hundreds. Four thousands, however, is equivalent to forty hundreds. And if I were to divide that by ten again and unbundle these each individually by ten again over, let's rewrite this here. Sorry about that. That's before I get ahead of myself, it's not 409. It should be 4 D hundreds. Great. If I divide that by 10, I would have, in this case, 400 tens. Because now each one of these would unbundle to another group of tens. So I'm just multiplying it, essentially, these numbers by 10. But because I'm dividing, the place value is going over to the right. We're going to practice this more in the next upcoming days. And we're going to start evolving out of place value disks to be able to do it more of a mental math way. But it's important to start our foundation with this with the place value disks. Now, as always, if you have followed this far, I'm going to go over an assessment question with you guys now. So find the value of the underlying digit. So the value. So how much this is worth. So we have each of these is a place value. So I have ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, and hundred thousands. All I care about here is this hundred thousands. I don't care about anything else after it. So is this equivalent to eight? No, it's in the hundred thousands place. For a draw place value chart for that, you would have eight in the hundred thousands. So that eight, its value is really a hundred thousand. You can practice that in a place value chart if you want to just check for yourself um, on some of these other assessment questions. But whatever the digit is, is what it's worth in that place value. Now, I look forward to seeing your work. I'm excited to continue working with you guys as we move forward. And I'll see you guys tomorrow.